What is up everyone, JD here. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna to be looking at what is probably one of the most controversial knives of 2024. Let's get into it. All right, guys, we are looking at the Peregrine Falcon from Remet or Remet Knives, however you want to say it. I've heard people say Remet. I'm going to continue to say Remet. Um, one of the most controversial knives, I think, this year. I could be wrong. Maybe there's something else out there, but this one's pretty controversial. We'll talk about that here in a minute. We're going to go ahead and jump into the review. So we're, what we're looking at is a pivot plunge lock that operates the liner lock here. Really cool feature that they went with here. Um, I really like it. I think it's very innovative. I love to see stuff like this instead of just plunge button locks out there. Uh, action on this one is excellent. Very snappy detent because it actually has a real detent on it. Um, I won't be able to take this one apart to take a look at it. It is a review sample, so unfortunately I can't, can't quite go into that. But I did do a little bit of cutting with it just to see what this M390 that's been such a point of controversy is all about, and uh, it did pretty good. Considering this is a review sample that's getting passed around, you know, the edge on it felt fine to me. When it went through the initial cut with the paper, it is a little bit of a thicker blade stock, thicker geometry overall. Um, it can slice, it's just a little thick uh, compared to some other knives that are out there that you could get with a little bit of a thinner geometry. Having said that, it went through the cardboard just fine. It was comfortable to hold. I mean, it's a very neutral uh, handle shape here. Nothing really hot on it. Nothing to really dig in, poke, or pinch you, which I really do appreciate. So that is a good thing. It also has a little bit of a spoon point here, even though there's no jimping. So I'm able to easily grip this to get through those power cuts. And then it's very comfortable with the detailed work. It is a Tonto, so I did try cutting with both tips. Um, and it cut straight line just fine, but I did notice if you had to do any type of detail cut work where you needed to move around a little bit, it was easier to get up on the tip, which is pretty low, than it was on the Tonto tip. Pinch grip position is fine. Again, I'm able to easily get on that Tonto for straight cut, trace cuts. Uh, for detailed work, though, I did move up a little bit and kind of use the forward part of the opening hole and just get up a little bit on the tip and then was able to kind of control that to do some detailed work. Choked up for getting into packages uh, and then for controlled power cuts, all of those were very comfortable for me, no issues whatsoever. Now it's a little unique to see a bolster raised up like this. I do like that they kept the rest of the knife normal thickness, I feel like, normal um, for the handle. And then just around the bolster, they kind of ramped up and made it thick here to accommodate that. My hope is that they're able to find materials or build, find ways to build materials to make it just a little bit thinner around the pivot um, for this type of technology to work. While it, it doesn't really bother me because they found a way to avoid it impeding my ergos, you can tell it's a little bit thicker and you do notice that a little bit in the pocket it's not awful but when you sit down you can kind of see that you got a little bit of bulge heading out towards the tip there that's what she said of the knife action again excellent great detent everything's very snappy very easy to deploy and i do like that i want to take a uh, take a special note i do notice uh, kevin inserted a piece of tritium here that i found in the unboxing there so you can see I don't know how well you'll be able to tell that it's glowing, but it is glowing. And I think they did the same thing here. I think uh, with the closed position, they have a little slot there where you could insert some tritium as well. Now, the pocket clip looks like it doesn't go all the way through. You kind of be able to nest it in there. So you would have to kind of gauge and make sure you seal either side of that to be able to get that tritium insert there on that Peregrine Falcon. Um, scores. I think we're ready for scores. No, size comparisons. We're going to do size comparison, and then we're going to weigh this one to give you an idea just how big it is. Here it is against the Spyderco lightweights. We got the Para 3 and the Manix 2 lightweight out here, and it is definitely uh, more of your medium-sized EVC. And because it is notched here, you're able to get a four-finger grip on here. So 
less real estate than the Manix 2 Lightweight, but more real estate than your Para 3 Lightweight. Let's do a couple more. We got the Kunwu Padre full-sized out here, which you can see is definitely bigger than the Peregrine Falcon. I'm trying to line up the pivots. And then we have the CJRB Echo, which is just slightly smaller, um, but also because of the way that they have the ergos on here, a four-finger grip. So it's very cool that they can kind of make everything compact but still give you that four finger grip i'm going to go ahead since i have these out here i'm going to use these for the fold up pocket profile comparison and thickness profile comparison because i think these uh two in particular are going to kind of give you an idea of where this peregrine falcon is kind of landing so you can see it is more close in size folded up to the CJRB Echo than it is the Padre. So even though it has more length overall, it is actually about the same size in pocket and even as far as real estate width, it's about the same. Now here's where I think it's gonna really uh, kind of depend on whether or not this matters to you, skinny jean people. <laughs> uh, you can see here, it is actually thicker than the Padre and that is because of the bolsters. So right at the frame, not so much, but right around the bolsters, you can see the bolsters stick out a little bit more on the Padre. And then on the Echo, which is about the same size folded up, you can tell just overall much, much thinner. As far as the weight on this, I haven't checked it yet. So let's pull the scale out here and check this one together. 4.8 ounces compared to the Padre, which is 5.3 full titanium. And compared to the Echo... 3.1 again full titanium so that what that system that they're using there with the steel liners and everything adding a little bit of weight to it now having said that to me i didn't really it didn't bother me carrying or handling the knife uh whatsoever now score on this one here what goes into my scores i guess i should explain first right it's going to be price point materials considered build quality and my experience with the performance you know everything that you would want to know about a knife uh, ergos cutting etc etc uh, a little bit thicker of a geometry i wish that they i think they could have too just carried that flat grind up a little bit more um that opening hole i don't really have access to it in any way shape or form what i'm hitting on is the sharpness of the fuller so uh, you know, it could have affected the look because they were, you know, they were going for this Falcon look, but I think you could have brought it up just a, a little bit more and I don't think it would have affected it that much to be honest. So bring it up, make it a little bit flatter. Also, I don't really like, uh, Tonto's for my daily carry. I would have preferred this to be a sheep's foot drop point or a reverse Tonto. Any of those blade chips would have worked for me better personally having said that i know that there's folks out there that like the tanto and probably like the aesthetic of how this pulls all together very comfortable ergonomically even though it is a little bit thick because of what they needed to do in order to make this steel liner uh pocket knife work with this plunge lock system and i wish that they would have made this fully here just a touch sharper not much just a little bit because i feel like even though i haven't to be fair slipped off sometimes i feel like i am going to slip off of this one but you know for the money a lot of titanium here steel liners a little weighty not my favorite blade shape on this one um and you know a little mundane i think if they would have done some knurling or some milling or brought some of this cross cut pattern into the middle there a little bit just to do something uh to make it pop out just a little bit more i do like the tritium uh, I think that would have gone a long way. I also love that they did the backspacer here with the integrated lanyard and not sacrifice that pocket clip. Kudos for that. Where am I at on the score on this one? For me, I'm at a 7-1. So, uh, yes, budget knives go up to 7, but I've never had a perfect budget knife hit a 7. I've had a couple in the high mid to mid to mid upper uh, sixes, but none of them hit a 7. So 7-1 seven, for me. I think you got a lot of positives here. Not my favorite Remet model, um, if I'm being totally honest. I like the innovation here, just a little thick. Don't like the blade shape. Don't like the plunge grind. It uh, doesn't leave a lot left for sharpening. Um, you know, and just, I guess the colors too are throwing me off a little bit. I would have preferred this to be like a black washed or like a raw titanium. Um, I think that would have worked better for me. Change the blade shape dress up your scale a little bit more or do different colors um 
and I think we got something here, especially if you have the steel liners in there already. Uh, I know that you've milled out the show side for weight relief, but you have the steel liner over here in order to make this device work. Maybe try doing some fat carbon, carbon fiber. Uh, that might that might really go a long way to add some color in there, you know, to make it pop a little bit. So don't know if that'll cause the price to go up a little, but I'd be okay with a little bit of a price hike to get that. Yep, I'm good. 7-1. Let me know what you think about the Paragon Falcon down in the comments below. Um, I know I didn't mention the controversy, but I think everybody knows that there was a YouTuber out there using a device not really meant to test heat treat for knife blade steels that are rock well hard like they are or cooked as high of a high at as high of a temperature as they are because they say that you won't be able to get consistent results um, and i think because of that remet reached out to some folks and said hey take your review sample that we sent you um, they tested some of their own but they wanted to be transparent and have some of the ones that they have out in the wild scent and they did and they came back at 59 and a half to 60 and a half for all the ones that i have seen and i have seen theirs and they had 259s and they had 160 and a half i think it was or maybe 61 um which is not awful but it's not excellent right it's pretty much run of the mill for what you get for m390 in production do we want that no of course we want 61 to 63 um but they're they're running it at the protocol that they're being told to run it at so I'm not mad at them for that. That's what you normally see from Chinese M390, right? No one really is doing it any better. Um, maybe, maybe Rayot might be doing it better, but I don't know that for a fact. So that might be where you're seeing it, but you're paying for that, right? That's a big difference in price. All right, that's it for me, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like on the way out, please. And thank you. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Love to have you follow along. Don't forget the links are down in the description below. I am an affiliate with Remet. So if you like this or you want to get something like this or something else from them, they do have budget knives. The link's down there. Let them know I sent you guys. <laughs> all right, I'm going to stop shilling. Have a great week, guys. I love you all. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.